happy TGIF to you. Um, peace be unto you this day. All we can do is trust God only above all things. And so I already know this video right off the jump. It's going to be called I Survived. So the song that the father gave me yesterday, and I forgot to even read the lyrics yesterday. And so um, he gave it again this morning. And so this is Mary, Mary, I survived. I don't remember if I mentioned it yesterday. I could have, but it came up again today. So I'm going to read the lyrics. It says, any day now is what I kept telling myself on the last mile, on the road to somewhere. But along the way, I got stopped by this is true. All the wind and the rain, and to my surprise, and it shook my heart. It blew my mind. I've had to cry so many nights. I know about that. I've had to hold on for my life. I know about that too. But all I can say now is that I survived. I know about that too. And it goes on and on to say, I survived. I survived. I survived. Oh, Lord, I had a lot on me. I feel you. Truth be told, it almost broke me. I know about that. But I am so glad I survived. I just, I survived. I survived now. Now hurt and pain, I know about that. Were sometimes my company. Mm -hmm. Separated from those, then I suppose I didn't have no guarantees. But one thing I knew for sure was, was I, I've had my share of ups and downs. I made it even though, oh, it shook my heart and it blew my mind. I've had to cry so many nights. I've had to hold on for my life. But all I can say now is that I survived. Okay? I know you heard this message before. I want to tell you once more, it's all right. You'll survive. I know the road on your, on, excuse me, your on might seem long. But I encourage you to hold on. Hold on. You will survive. I do believe you will. But all I can say now is that I survived. When the weight of the world's on your shoulders, all on your shoulders, excuse me, just remember, remember, remember to keep your head up and survive. Um, and it repeats everything again. This is my song back in the day. I will play it every day, all day. Um, sometimes I break out crying and sometimes I didn't, you know, throughout life. It just depends on how the father ministered to you and how it hits you. And so, some things that may hit me differently than someone else. It's, it's your walk. It's your journey because we don't go through exactly the same thing, but I will never tell somebody that they went through less than me or more than me or anything like that. I just know that it has been held on earth for me for many years. That's all I can say. And so I'm using this to try to encourage God's people to, to know that you can survive. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that the circumstance has changed, changed completely yet. However, you focus on the kingdom of heaven and all its righteousness. You stay at the feet of Jesus. You overcome. You're no longer focusing on your circumstances. You're no longer focusing on all the hell around you. You are focused on your father. And that's it. Because you know when you trust him that he's going to come through in due time. All in his time. It's just a matter of time. That's something that I will always tell him in um, 2013. Yelling and crying. It's just a matter of time. Just a matter of your time. Okay, and so let me get into this because I do have several scriptures today. Some of them he was giving me over and over during the week. Um, sometimes I, I read them over and over again. That is the only true way that you're going to get every piece of information that you need. Is to, No matter how many times someone gives you a scripture, to read it over and over again. And if you, like for me, I'll say, oh, I just read that a couple of days ago. Or I read it last week. I'll still go back and read it again. And I've been doing that for many, many years because that's what the Father put in me to do. And so... That helps you to study. Um, him choosing the scriptures for you, that helps you to study. He's often chose scriptures for me. And so I never asked anyone about other scriptures or anything like that. So let me get into this. This was after the video yesterday. And then I'll let you know when I get to today. So after the video yesterday, he had me write truth revealed. Um, man, and this, this was a dream, y'all. A man was caught in sin. Man was caught in sin. It's how I wrote it. Man caught in sin. Because it's not just one person. Sometimes people, these people are a symbol of a group of people. And so um, in the dream, they were lying 
about the time. Also, um, caught in adultery. It just was different scenarios. Sometimes I have a dream and I'm just looking on like it's a, a movie or something. I'm just looking on and seeing what's happening. And then the father allowed me to be a part of it and some kind of way help people um, in the dream. It, it's just, he does it different ways for me. I can't explain it um, all the way right now because I'm not on that right now. And so let me move on. And so he also had me write that I'm faithful to God. We are in covenant with him. Some of you have been scooping and pooping everywhere against God and, and not even trying to change and turn away from your sins. You know, um, he's going to keep beckoning you only so long. We got an a lot of time, y'all. Y'all got to get this about the father. Even way back in history, in the word, you have an a lot of time that he will give you before it break out. That's the truth. And so... Um, after that, he had, had me also to write, um, in the judgment, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. And so he wanted me to give the scripture. Uh, this is for somebody, um, also breaking and made it to the end, but this is second Kings, um, chapter four. This is for some people this is what he has had me say one thing i've noticed about this world they'll believe a lie over the truth because if it's something they've never heard before because they can't perceive in spirit if you're walking in the flesh it's going to be foolishness to you and you're not going to understand not a word that's coming out of my mouth because i'm walking in the spirit and so with me in my mind there is no measure i don't believe in magic i don't believe in none of that crap i believe in jesus christ and the power of the true and living God. If you have a form of godliness and you deny the power of God from such turn away, I don't I don't fool with people like that because you'll become stagnant like them. They don't grow in the spirit. They don't know that the power the power of God that's within them through Jesus Christ just for, for you believing and receiving him. And that's it. It's nothing you gotta do. It's just receive him and continue to to receive him, surrender, turn away from this world and receive him. You grow in spirit. Um, through relationship and stand at the feet of Jesus. So 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 35. I'm going to read a couple verses before. Please read the whole chapter for yourself. This is speaking of Elisha. Um, this was, uh, let me see where he wants me to start. Okay, so this was a barren uh, woman. And she ended up having, uh, let me, let me see. Let me paraphrase and then I'll get to the part the father wants me to read because you're not going to get it if, if I don't paraphrase it, Elisha and the widow's oil. Okay. That's the beginning of that. And, and he asked her, um, he came through. What happened was he came through. It says, um, your servant, my husband is dead. This is what she said. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. Um, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be slaves. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Let me make sure I'm on the right one. I am. It's going to switch. Let me make sure I get down to the right part. Because I want you to read it on your own so that you get it. This is the vessels that were full and they were overflowing and all of that. Um, the oil was overflowing so much until they had to keep bringing vessels. Um, it shows how God, and it says, go sell the oil and it will pay your debt. And your sons live on the rest. And so it just shows how God, he doesn't do it any different than he did it back then. It's just more modern now. And, and the things that we focus on, it's just not of God, y'all. I don't care how you fix it up. You're becoming like the world because things of God always is going to um, go back into the kingdom of God. That's what it's going to do. And so, okay, so Elisha raises the Shunammites' son. That's the part I'm supposed to be on. And this starts from verse 8 on down. Okay. And so I'm going to paraphrase and then get to the part he wants me to read. Okay. And so he went to Shunem this time, Elisha. Um, she persuaded him to eat food. So as he, whenever all that, it passed by, um, he would turn in there to eat some food. And she said to her husband, husband, look now, I know that this is a holy man. That's another thing to entertain. You want to entertain holy. You don't want to entertain um, just anybody. And, you know, you know in spirit if it's somebody you're supposed to do something for. You know in spirit if you're truly walking in the spirit. Okay. So, um, 
she mentioned to her husband that it, he was a holy man. Um, please let us make a, a, a room for him, an upper room for him. And she did. She put a bed in, a lampstand, all of that. And so then he said to Gehazi, his servant, call this Shunammite woman. When he had called her, she stood before him. Say now to her, look, you have been concerned for us with all this care. What can I do for you? That's a servant of God. They're going to always ask you, what can I do for you? How can I help you? That's customer service too. But it's Christian service. How may I help you? It's not always about being self-centered and about yourself. God's people are hurting all over the world. And no one seems to care. But God, he's going to show y'all some things. Okay? So, um, do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. So he said, what then is, what, what then is to be done for you? And she said, actually, she has no son and her husband is old. And so he said, call her. And when he had called her, um, it says about this time next year. You shall embrace a son. And she said, No, my Lord, man of God, do not lie to your maid servant. That's a form of unbelief, in a sense. When God is using his messengers to tell you something and you're still not receiving it, that's a form of unbelief. All, all you need to do after that is just believe. If you got to tell yourself that every day, that's what you do. I've had to do, I'm telling you, I've had to do these things myself. Nothing is impossible for God. For years. I'm not talking about just one day. I've told myself years. If I begin to doubt a second, nothing is impossible for God. No matter what it is, he can do anything. With man, it is impossible. But anything is possible for my God. The God I serve, the true and living God, anything is possible for him. And so, but the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come. Get that. It has to be in God's appointed time. Sometimes it happens suddenly, and sometimes it's just an appointed time. It stretches your faith. It stretches, stretches your patience. It helps you to trust God more. Increase your faith. Okay? And so the child grew, and then I'm going to skip down. And he said to his father, my head, my head. The baby wasn't feeling well. The son wasn't feeling well. I call everybody a baby. So excuse me. I just love the babies. Okay, so he said to the servant, carry him to his mother. When he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat down um, knees to new and then died. The baby died, y'all. Her only child that had been promised to her died. And she went up and laid him on the bed um, of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called to her husband and said, please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God. Come back. Why are you going to, to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. She said, it is well. It is well. It is well. That's what she said. Even though she knew, she still said it was well. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hey, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's for somebody. It is well. It is well. No matter what it looks like. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me calm down. Okay, okay. Drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw her afar off that he said to his servant, Look, the Shunammite woman, please run now to meet her and say to her, It is well with you. Oh, Jesus. It is well with your husband. It is well with your child. And she answered it. It's well, it is well. Now, when she came to the man of God at the hill, she caught him by the feet. Whew. Thank you, Jesus. But the Kazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress. And the Lord has hidden it from me and has not told me how to do that as well. He has done that with me, with certain people, um, for a season or for a time and then he reveals in his time in due time that is true and it increases my faith 
when he does that, it increases my faith. So she said, did I ask the son of, the, of my Lord? Question. Did I not say, do not deceive me? Question. And he said to, to the Gehazi, get yourself ready. Take my staff in your hand and be on your way. If you meet anyone, do not greet him. Get that, y'all. When God say, be silent, you be silent. You can do what you want to do. There's many times he has told me to be silent. I don't care who it was. I don't care how nice you was. He told me to be silent and that's what it is. And so, do not answer him, is what he said. But lay my staff on the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, as the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you alone. So he rose and followed her. Now the Gehazi went on ahead of them and laid the staff on the child, on the face of the child. Excuse me. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Therefore he went back to meet him and told him, saying, The child has not awakened. When Elisha came into the house, there was the child lying dead on his bed. He went in, therefore shut the door behind the two of them and prayed to the Lord. And he went up and laid on the child. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And put his mouth on his mouth and his eyes on his eyes and his hands on his hands and he stretched forth. <sighs> Let me get this right. I'm getting excited. Hang on. And he stretched himself out on the child. And the flesh of the child became more. He returned to walk back and forth in the house and again went up and stretched himself out on him. <sighs> then the child sneezed seven times and the child, I, his, he opened his eyes and he called the Gehazi and said, call this, call this Shunammite woman. So he called her and when she came in to him, he said, pick up your son. So she went in and fell at his feet and bowed to the ground and she picked up her son and went out. Hey God. God, it is so in the mighty name of Jesus. You struggle for no reason. You got to trust the power of God. You trust God's power. Trust God only. That's why you're still sitting in it. That's for y'all. You're still sitting in it because you're not trusting the true and living God. This power is still the same then and it is now the same. It remains the same into eternity. There is no greater God than the true and living God. He makes all things manifest. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the next part is Elisha purifies the pot of stew. And I'm just going to read the whole chapter for you. So I just feel the Holy Spirit on me strong. And I, I need I have more information that I need to give you guys that you are encouraged this day. Stop sitting in mess that you don't have to sit in. If you trust God the way you're supposed to trust it. That's just what it is, y'all. I am a living witness. All the hell that has been on this earth for a lifetime. <sighs> Up and down, round and round the bend, chasing my own tail, just not trusting God the way that I should, and not knowing Him for myself and staying at the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <sighs> no other help I know. <sighs> you are a blessed God. There is none greater than you. I bless your holy name. There is none greater than you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, God. Hey, God. Hear your people, Lord God Almighty. Hear your people. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for answering us, oh God. Many of us have waited a long time, Jesus. Thank you for answering us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Almighty God. 
forever and ever. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and Hallelujah, hallelujah. You cannot quench the spirit of the true and living God. It cannot be done. Okay, y'all. Hang on. Let me get my stuff together because I'm starting to shake. Okay. 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 Put on a large part. I'm, I'm skipping now. Re please read the whole chapter for yourself. 39. A stew for the sons of the prophets. Okay, so they did so. Let me go on down. Then they served it to the men to eat in 40. As they were um, eating the stew, they cried out, Man of God, there is death in this pot. And they could not eat it. So he said, Then bring some flour. And he put it into the pot to serve it to the people that they may eat. And there was nothing harmful in the pot. There you go. It's the God we serve. Okay. Elisha feeds a hundred men. And, you know, the Father will keep doing it over and over again. Do it for you individually. It's available to us. He gave Elisha double. I remember asking him for double. I got psychotic faith, y'all. There is no measure to my faith because he has made me that way. Whatever he did for whoever in history and now, what he did for Jesus, I believe he'll do it for me. And you should do the same. Don't stop at somebody else's dream. Look at Jesus. Follow Jesus. I'm going to get to that in the end. Let me get off. Okay. Okay. Spirit of God is renewing our hearts through the Holy Spirit reviving us as he promised. He kept giving um, former latter rain and he's just been giving this morning uh, latter rain is what he gave this morning. Restrain, restraining from sin is what the Holy Spirit does for, for us. So there are no excuses because the Holy Spirit does restrain you from sin. I'm a living witness, y'all. I'm telling you. When people try to come and tempt you, the Holy Spirit always give you a way out. You just got to take it. Some of you are just not taking your way out. That's it. And he strengthens you to do that, to take your way out. He'll give you a way out of temptation every time. Okay. He gave lying over and over and over and over and over and over and over again uh, yesterday. This was from yesterday. And so he kept giving uh, Babylon fallen. I'm going to get into that later. Revelations 18 over and over again as well. Swift destruction church leave revelations 19 um israel's oppression we are spiritual israel second coming uh complete sudden and unexpected change change he's been doing it for me suddenly many things um a wicked person has said this to someone else with me it's like um he brought to my remembrance a lot of words that they were given to the people around me because he was confusing them they didn't realize every word that he they gave everybody else he was it was all for me. He's bringing it back to my remembrance. Some was for them, but because she was that wicked and didn't want to give me the full word, he still made her say it, but she said it to other people that was with me. And so it's just amazing how God works thing. I'm going to get into it later on, not on this particular person. I just want you guys to be encouraged and know that it is available to all of us. It's up to you to decide, choose Jesus Christ fully so that you Receive the anointing of Jesus Christ, the true anointing of Jesus Christ. There is no limit to it. It's immeasurable. It's up to you to decide how far you want to go. Okay. Um, <clears throat> he kept saying to me over and over again, darkness revealed, corruption revealed. Is He had me do the ED this time because you, he had, had been saying um, he's revealing it. And so he'll change words on me. So that's why I'll come back and I'll say it again. And I'm trying to be specific about the words so you can he hear that he's um, already working these things out. But some of you are not receiving it. That's why you're you're not changing. Don't look for the people outside of you to change. You're supposed to be changing and transforming to Jesus Christ. That's why he's allowing all of this. I'll get into that later on as well. Because um, even with myself, 
in previous videos a lot of people are commenting on very old videos you've been able to see my process my final phase of the process that the father was doing within me as he was revealing more of himself to me and so a lot of people are com commenting on very old videos when i was speaking about the nefarious dogs and so that person's dead i'm no longer in that place matter of fact i made my little birthday shirt uh, last year and i always you know those that don't know me i love blue and i'll forever love blue nobody can make me not like blue <laughs> And so um, on it is a crown and it says birthday queen. So this morning, that's what I felt like. That's I was like, Papa, new life. I'm, I've been born again. I'm going to wear my birthday. Today is my birthday. I'm going to wear my birthday shirt. New life. And so <clears throat> don't allow wickedness to keep you in one position and not move forward. That's what you're supposed to do. That's why... The nefarious dogs have come against you so hard because you're remaining stagnant. So they're feeding off of that. They're feeding off your fear. You know, people say with their mouth that they're not fearful um, because I did that in a time when I was fearful. Now I'm fearless. I'm, I don't fear nothing. I don't. Um, I, my mind is soldier. I have the mind of Christ, so I'm thinking like he is. I'm not thinking about um, what people can do to me. I'm thinking about that the Father can destroy me twice, so I don't care nothing about you. I don't. And so... Um, it's going to make them come harder for you. Just focus on Jesus Christ instead of feeding Jesus because he's taking care of them. That he is doing. That I do know. And so remember, they're not going to give up because some of them are committed. I'm going to get into that in a minute. The more we trust God, for me, I could care less. I care less about this world. I care nothing about this world in this time. That's what the point that he has gotten me to heavily minded that i'm no earthly good that is i that's her now and so focused on the kingdom of heaven and all this righteousness he is adding the rest he is adding the rest the promise keep them so he's changing my words up you know um this was from yesterday reveal false because we got to do our part too um in some videos, you saw me where I've revealed a lot of people. That's because he instructed me to. Because that's how you're speaking it and speaking it into the spirit, uh, spiritual realm. Um, when you believe in faith and you are righteous and you're walking in that thing, that's what you can do. That's available to you. And so he had me speak those things. And then as he as I spoke it, more and more peace, more and more peace, more and more peace. Just taking you higher. Like even when I was. Starting early, I just felt like I was floating away, y'all. And so, of, of course, I started shaking all of that. But, <sighs> okay, let me get back into this because you know I can go, you know, I can go on somewhere else. Okay. Evil has in, ended getting away from the enemy. Couldn't catch me. This was a prophetic word from my, um, my soldier uh, in 2013. God is going to force the wicked ones, the nefarious dogs with a little power, because they think they got power and you ain't got no power, to cease. He's going to do it. He's forcing you to cease because they're not going to give up. We're not giving up. They're not giving up. But they're going to give up because the Father's going to force them to cease. That's another prophetic word from um, my, my soldier. The wicked will cease. We are marching on. That's what she sent me earlier um, last year. Um, okay. He kept giving lie told, which I already know. Like a lot of people lie on me. They have lied on me. I already know. Um, he revealed those things, which is fine. I don't care because they lied on Jesus. So I'm not greater than my Lord. So it's whatever. Um, but the truth will be revealed. That I do know. On all. And so he also gave after that death, warfare, Enemies scattered. Um, hardened hearts don't hear. They don't. They don't hear. They're, your heart, you don't see or hear. Your heart is hardened. You don't want to hear what nobody got to say. And so, um, he also has been saying over and over again, "Ready for the harvest." Uh, this was a news headline, just like that. Ready for the harvest. And then he also gave 
new life right after that. Uh, faith and obedience is how we overcome. I'm going to try to stop rocking, y'all. <sighs> Escape, end of the world. Let's see. In this dream, I heard someone, t um, a person talking about me in the dream. This, this is not the only one. I've had several like that. I even had one recently last year of a person I revealed like I was standing in spirit listening to them um, speak about Mama Soldier, which they've always done that. It's not like we didn't know, but they've always caused confusion in the natural. And so, and so he had me right after that twisted lies, um, false about me. And so, um, varying false witness. My father will shut all mouths. Mouths. That's what he gave me this morning. Um, the vision that he gave me on 320 of this year. And in the, the vision was, um, prophecy is what he had me write. It, it was prophetic. It was a prophetic vision. The person was asleep and they just jumped up out the bed awake. And so he had me write out to that suddenly. Some, some of you are going to be, most of you, I hear him say all of you are going to be uh, suddenly awaken, jolted awake. Don't be like me in fear. Uh, when he did it for me um, in 2013 and 2014, because matter of fact, I remember I went to this anniversary party and I felt like um, wicked was, wickedness was just all around me. And so even at the anniversary party, we sat out in the parking lot and had communion in 2013. And so, um, but the wicked, or, or one of the wicked ones came out there and so moving on and then right after that i was caught away in the spirit on 320 this but this happens often for me and so he wanted me to say that this morning that's what happened i was caught away um in the spirit right after that uh, prophetic vi vision okay and so he took me on to he kept giving Uzzah over and over again struck dead for error and so he took me to second samuel and chapter six second samuel and chapter six and he had me right this morning we are the ark of the covenant of god now um by jesus christ his spirit dwells in us um all who believe because everything um relating to the ark of the covenant is spiritual now for us and so i said what was it um Oh, Second Samuel chapter six and verse six. I'm not going to read all of it. Please read, read it for yourself if you're interested, because I have other scriptures that that are important that he wants me to read today. It's for some of you. You know which ones are for you. If not, I'll read them for yourself. Okay. Okay, and so and when they came to nation's threshing floor. Uzzah put on his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen stumbled. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against Uzzah, and God struck him there for his error. And he died there by the ark of God. And so it goes on to say, And David became angry because of the Lord's outbreak against Uzzah. And he called the name of the place Perez Uzzah to this day. And so nine says, David was afraid of the Lord that day. And he said, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? You know, when those type of things, it makes you be more cautious and you have proper fear of the Lord that, that you're going to do what he said to do. Some of you don't have proper fear because you're still doing things you're not supposed to be doing. You're still walking in false light. You're still mixing um, religion of man and doctrine of man, religion, tradition, and all that, which makes it false. And you're leading people astray and causing confusion. So David would not move the ark of the Lord with him into the city of David. But David took it aside into um, a house of Obed Edom, the Gittite or Jittite, probably Gittite. Okay, and so let me go down. So then now it was told King David in verse 12, the Lord was, has blessed the house of Odom Edom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So we are blessed when we have the Holy Spirit in us. That's the truth. Eternally. 
you know, from generation to generation. And so um, it goes on to say that he got it to him. And so 14, then David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was wearing a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. And so this is when Michael, his wife, saw him dancing and leaping and twirling <laughs> and getting down. Um, and she despised him in her heart. So they brought the ark of the Lord and set it in the place in the midst of the tabernacle. And David had erected for it. Did David offer burnt offerings and peace offering before the Lord? And when David had finished offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of the hosts. Then he distributed among all the people, among the whole multitude of Israel, both the women and men, to everyone a loaf of bread. Get that. And a piece of meat and a cake of raisins. Get that. So all the people departed, everyone, to his house. Then David returned to bless his household. And Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet him. How glorious was the king of Israel today, uncovering himself today in, in the eyes of the maids of his servants, as one of the base um, fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. So David said to Michael, it was before the Lord who chose me instead of your father and all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord over Israel. Therefore, I will play music before the Lord and, um, and I will be even more undignified than this and will be humble in my own sight. But as for the maid servants of whom you have spoken by them, I will be held in honor. Therefore, Michal, the daughter of Saul, had no children to the day of her death. God will deal with you, mess with this anointed for no reason. Um, because of your jealousy or because of uh, whatever it is in you. It's, it has nothing to do with them. It's, it's what's in you. And so, let's see. He, after that, he gave swift destruction. That's for some of you that uh, keep coming for God's people. And pride makes you think you're going to get away with it because um, nothing has happened yet. Wait on it. Okay. All it takes. This is what he had me right after that because he kept giving me a lie over and over again. All it takes is one person to spread a lie. A little, like a little yeast. It swells the bread. And he had me write vengeance after that. Okay, the Ark of the Covenant, covenant um, symbolized the Holy of Holies. So now he's going to take me to, Reve um, not Revelations yet, but um, Hebrews chapter 9. And he wants me to read all of that. Hebrews chapter 9. And um, this is going to confirm what Jesus Christ did for us um, of why Let's see. Hebrews chapter 9. Okay. And then he wants me to start at uh, verse 1. The earthly sanctuary. Then indeed, even the first covenant, get that, had um, ordinances of divine service and the earthly sanctuary. For a tabernacle was prepared, the first part in which was the lampstand, the table, and the showbread which is called the sanctuary. And behind the second veil, the part of the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid on all sides with gold, in which were the golden pot that had the manna, Aaron's rod that budded, and the tablets of the covenant. And above it were the cherubim, cherubim of glory overshadowing the mercy seat. Of these things we, can, we cannot now speak in detail limitations of the earthly service that's why you got to walk in the spirit because if you do not walk in the spirit you're going to be limited in earthly service and so now when these things have been put excuse me have been thus prepared the priest always went into the first part of the tabernacle performing the services um but into the second part the high priest went alone. High priest, get that. Once a year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the people's sins. That's what it's for. Committed in ignorance. 
the Holy Spirit indicating that this, indicating this, that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest. While the first tabernacle was still standing, it was symbolic for the present time in which both gifts and sacrifices are offered, which cannot make him perform the service perfect in regard to the conscience. Concerned only with foods and drinks, various washings and fresh, uh, uh, fleshly, fleshly, fleshly ordinances imposed until the time of reformation. The heavenly sanctuary, but Christ Jesus came as the high priest of the good things to come with the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is, not of this creation, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption. For at the blood of the bulls and the goats and the ashes of a heifer, sprinkling the unclean sanctifies for the purifying of the flesh. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without a spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Question. And for this reason, he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of eternal inheritance. Jesus Christ, new high priest, he fulfilled. You no longer giving up tithes and everything to, um, you gave offering and all of that for sin. Are you still in sin? Yeah, but through Christ Jesus, he see us perfected and forgiven when you ask. So if you're still practicing things that, that's why he kept telling me to tell you guys, read the book of Hebrews. It tells everything you're making what Jesus Christ did, none effect when you do that. And that's why you're not growing in spirit. That's why your followers are not growing in spirit. That's why. And so the mediator's death necessary for where there is a testament, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is in force after men are dead, since it has no power at all while the testator lives. Therefore, not even the first covenant was dedicated without blood. For when Moses, Moses had spoken every precept to all the peoples according to the law, he took the blood of the calves and the goats with water and scarlet wood, wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book itself and all the people saying, this is the blood of the covenant which God has commanded you. Then likewise, see some of y'all, you take communion and you um, celebrate Easter and you still don't have a clue what Jesus did, like what all this means. That's, that's bad. It's the truth of God is what changes your life. That's what makes you change. That's what makes you able to receive the spirit of the living God and continue to grow and not be stagnant and living in sin. Um, then likewise, he sprinkled the blood, both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And according to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. And without shedding of the blood, there is no remission. That's why he always give me for the remission of sins. When I take my communion, that's what I say. I honor him for the remission of my sins that he gave it up once and for all for us. That's true. Greatness is in the Bible. Read it for yourself and get understanding only through the Holy Spirit. Greatness of Christ's sacrifice. The point is, when you believe, you're not going to still practice those things that you have been practicing because it makes what Jesus Christ did not effect. I want you to get that. Greatness of Christ's sacrifice. Therefore, it was necessary that the copies of the things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has not in entered the holy places made with hands which are copies of the truth but into the heaven itself you can't get no better than that now to appear in the presence of god for us not that he should offer himself often as a high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood of another 
he then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared. Get that. To put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this, the judgment. Get that. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly, eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time, apart from sin or salvation. And so he appears to us in spirit. We're waiting in, that, in the natural to see him in the natural. And y'all got to get this. Go read the book of Hebrews. A lot of things that you have been practicing over the years, even since you were a child. Um, that is not something that I practiced since I was a child. Um, I always witnessed my papa. I don't know how he does it now, but I, you give well, how in your heart, how the Holy Spirit leads you. That's what I've always done. That's what I've always done. And I remember seeing, um, I was chastised for trying to tithe. I was chastised for trying to um, sow seeds with money and all of this foolishness. And that's why I know it is true. And um, I remember this one pastor saying one time, and I stopped watching them. This is when I was televised, um, watching televangelists at that time. I was, I was trying to say, um, televising myself is what I was going to say. And I remember them saying that if you don't give this money, that you are cursed. And I did not like that. It did not sit well in my spirit. My spirit was trouble. It did not sit well with me at all. We are not under, under a curse. And for you to say that to get money, that's not of God. And so let me keep it moving. Okay, and so um, Revelations, it, uh, he also gave Revelations chapter 11 and verse 19. Revelations chapter 11 and verse 19. Oh, Jesus. Then the temple of God was opened in heaven and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple. And there were lightnings, noises, thunderings, an earthquake, and great hell. That's what he wanted me to read with that. Also, the Ark of the Covenant, um, it was created a year after um, Israel's exodus from Egypt. He wanted me to say that. That's when the Ark was created. He wanted me to say that part as well. Okay? The false liars will shut it. This is what the Father had me write. Uh, this morning. This is from this morning. Let me see. Yeah, just so I'm just starting on this morning. Um, the false liars will shut it. God's true speakers are going forth. Nothing impossible for God. Promise. He has promised us much. He has promised me. I'm speaking for myself. He has promised me many things and they are manifesting. Um, every time I speak, they are coming to pass and nobody can stop it. That's what I do know. Um, that's why he's having me speak on a lot now. Um, I had to make sure my video was still on. I don't know why it was um, doing that. Okay. Assembling, assembling with others. Nothing is impossible for God. If I didn't say that, I'm saying it again. Judgment, short time. Prophesy to the nations. Uh, we all must remember the lessons. He's, he does this to teach us lessons. When you remember the lessons, you're not going to keep doing the same thing over and over again. Trust God only and follow his instructions. He also gave double favor. He has been giving me double of everything. And I mentioned that in previous videos that I am sure of. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. If you're not ready, get your salvation today. Don't delay any second, any minute, any hour. Jesus is coming. Any day, Jesus is coming. Um, he also had me write down the vision that he gave me. I'm, I remember mentioning this, but he wants me to say it again. Judgment Day. Um, I had a vision of this, of Judgment Day. Um, people were getting, they were being announced and getting their reward. That was the vision that I had. And this was years ago. Jesus has raised up apostles. He wants me to read this again. Excellent in hearing and sight, spiritually. Prophets to the nations to destroy the enemies, kingdom, kingdom of darkness, any enemy, any enemy you have is God's enemy and they're going to be in trouble and raise up the kingdom of God. 
going two by two. You wanted me to say this again. With the anointing of Christ Jesus filled up and overflowing. With the keys to the kingdom. Hey, God. With the keys to the kingdom. Binding and loosing on earth as it is in heaven. He also gave keys again to me to confirm that. Closed and locked to wickedness. Pushed out. New creation. God's mighty army. Pure righteous. Pure and righteous. Okay. Sowing. The true word of God. And he had me right again. The spirit of the Lord rests upon me. Okay. Children of God. Harvest, war, uh, government, sorrow is what he had me write. Every day he has been given joy comes in the morning. That's for some of you. You got to wake up every day. Joy this morning. He gave again binding and loosing rest from enemies. Okay. He wants me to say this. He gave this to me um, the end of last year and it, and simply said death of spouses that's what he gave me last year okay so he wants me to go to matthew chapter 16. i'm sorry that i'm i'm rocking y'all matthew 16. okay peter confesses jesus as the christ he wants me to read this that's starting at verse 13 through um, verse 20. When Jesus came into the region, I want to say uh, Caesarea or something like that, Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, who do men say that I am, that I, the son of man, am? Question. So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah and others Jeremiah or, or one of the prophets. He said to them, well, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter and on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Christ. He was Jesus the Christ. Okay. And so, um, okay, that's it on that one. Reading on, he's, he also had me write, um, ask and it shall be given to you. You got to ask for it. Reward. Yes, Jesus loves me. That's one of my favorite songs. I know we all learned that when we were a child. Um, but I, I love that song. I'll break out in it anytime. Okay. End of old. We gave this morning, again, Jeremiah 29, 11. Uh, once again, seven spirits of God. He also had me write one year. Um, new year, new beginning, past maturity. God is so amazing. Um, he can make it a new year anytime. Love, hope, strength, courage, freedom. And then he had me write female warrior prophet. Okay. Okay. Pride and bitterness of the church redemption he, he's going to redeem us but you he's going to have to open up them hearts to receive it those speaking for god must only let um only listen to god 100 percent accurate that's what's going to make you 100 percent accurate because if you're listening to other people over god you're going to be in trouble and if you're listening to only yourself you're really going to be in trouble only by the holy spirit we overcome must be Filled up and overflowing. He keeps giving that over and over again. He also gave um, beloved peace, joy, healing um, from mourning and grief. This is what he said to me. 
hope restored. This is something else he has told me. He has given me many promises. I'm just reading them into the, um, speaking them forth into the spirit, um, the heavens. Inheritance generation to generation. Ladder to heaven, refreshing, old to new. Okay, so he gave this morning again, Babylon has fallen. Babylon is a world system opposed to God. Revelations 18 is what he gave again. Um, I heard in the spirit, faithful. Not today. It, it, it was a while ago, but he had me write it today. Okay. Discern and test accuracy. Before you even open up your mouth to share anything. I already told you guys, I wait on things. Some things I have waited on for years and I never said it. Because you have to make sure that it's true for yourself first and before you open up your mouth and speak it. Okay. He also gave again this morning uni unity. And so he took me back, way back. I hear him say 2012 to a vision that he gave me. The vision was a queen walking through a garden. And there was a statue of an elephant. And I remember uh, writing like, strength and strong and power and um giving me thick skin just a, a lot of different things because um i tell y'all way back in the day i used to be wanting to wear my heart on the sleeve on my sleeve because i knew that i was being genuine and kind to of people and i just they kept repaying evil for for good and so he also kept giving me esther so um esther's name means hide conceal secret those were the definitions that came up um, he also kept giving me queen over and over again. Most powerful female is what he had me write this morning. Um, we are royalty because of King Jesus, the King of Kings. We are royalty and I claim that thing all the way into eternity. Okay. So Jubilee, renew, revive, restore, recover. I can't remember when he gave me this, but he had me write it again this morning. So to re, uh, renew, make something new and fresh. I hope you can't hear all this background noise that's going on with this loud lawnmower. I hope you guys can really hear me. Um, turn your volume up. I hope my yelling don't hit you in your ear. However, I got to do what I got to do because I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep doing what, what it is that my father wants me to do because he's going to clear the way. Not only is he clearing it in the spirit, he's going to remove all these little nefarious dogs that I do know. He has said it and he has shown me that he was going to do it. So I'm still going to continue to do what it is he wants me to do. You can't do nothing to me. And so, um, let's see. And then they standing in one spot with the lawnmower, y'all, on top of it. So special. So special. Okay, so I'm going to read it again. Renew, make something new, fresh, strong again. Uh, resume an activity after an interruption, um, extend, revive, return to life or consciousness, become active or flourishing again, bring back, renew in the mind and memory. I thought that was awesome. Um, I've always told people like my memory is long. I can remember. I have remembered a lot and I know that it's the Holy Spirit because if it's something I'm not thinking about, he bring it, brings it back to my remembrance. And so restore. Put back into existence or use. Put back into former state. Put again in possession of something. Rescue. Make up. Oh, excuse me. Recover to get back. Rescue. Make up for to gain. Buy. Legal process. Save from loss. Regain normal position or condition. Loose. Bind. Lies told. Judgment upon all those people. The past is behind. When you say the past is behind, you got to really put it behind. You can't keep talking about things that's going on with you. Um, you rarely ever hear me talk about what people have done to me or the little what the ne little nefarious dogs are doing because it don't it don't phase me. I don't really care because I'll break out in a dance and start to sing or whatever because I, I don't see you. I already know what it is. God has sent help. So I'm really about to act the donkey now. And so let's see. Um, 11, 19, 20, 18. 
He keeps having me say this over and over again, but he wants me to take me to the scripture. I got to read the scripture. This is about to cut off. So I'm going to do a, uh, yeah, I should be able to get the rest into a part two. Um, I'm not going to close out until the next video, y'all.